Good evening and welcome to Wednesday night's Wednesday night Bible study. My name is Pastor Joe and it is such an honor and a privilege to be able to share with you from the Word of God and uh, and just hope that you're having a blessed week and and staying cool. But first, before we get into tonight's message, let's pray for rain. We need rain here in North Dakota. We need it here on the west side of the state. The whole state needs moisture. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, you said when we are in need, we're to ask and to continue to ask. And we are asking right now, Lord God, we're continuing to pray for rain. We need rain to saturate our grounds Lord God, for our farmers and ranchers, Lord God, would you send the rain to the land, Lord God, that they would have um, good growth in the fields and in the pastures and everything, Lord God, that we need rain. And Lord God, that you would give wisdom, Lord God, to the ranchers and the farmers, Lord God, that and that they would cry out to you, Lord, continue to cry out to you, Lord God, for rain and for wisdom and understanding and, Lord, and direction, Lord God. Would you help us this day, in this time, in this season? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for praying and continuing to pray. Tonight we're going to continue with another timely word here tonight. And it's, I'm going to be reading it out of a translation um, in New King James. And, and after I read it here, you might be feel like I felt when I first read it and have read it before and maybe... Like, like myself, that you have gone to another translation and maybe it, it sounded a little bit better in a different translation. It wasn't so, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but I'm going to read it here. It's in 1 Peter 1.13. 1 Peter 1.13 in New King James Version says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. And boy, I, and I just went over to NIV and I went to some other translations and no one else says it this way other than maybe the King James as well. But in the NIV it says, therefore with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hopes on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Talking about the second coming of Christ and when that would be revealed. And, but I don't want to shy away from the first translation from here in the New King James Version. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. And it's a very interesting phrase that Peter uses here when he wrote this verse. And it's almost embarrassing, like I said in the beginning, you might like, like me, I'm like, oh, that kind of seems a little controversial or a little embarrassing. I'm going to go to a different translation, but there's a reason, you know, and it's very important to understand the original here, what the, the, the original intent of why Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote that. See, the phrase, gird up the loins, comes from a Greek word, and I'm not even going to attempt to <laughs> pronounce the Greek word, but it was used to describe Orientals who wore long robes. And, and before they would go on a long journey or run a competitive race, they would gather up the loose ends and tuck them up under their girdle. So you can just imagine, you know, you got this long robe on, and you know if you're going to go run or even a long journey in a long robe, you kind of you kind of have to pick it up those loose ends, and if you want to win, if you want to have good mobility, I think about uh, sometimes when my wife wears a dress, she loves wearing long flowy dresses. Uh, when she's going to move a little bit more quickly or step over something, she pulls up the bottom of her dress so that she's able to pick up her legs a little bit better. Versus if she was just let the dress all the way down to her ankles, it kind of impedes some of that mobility. And that's what it's talking about here is that these loose ends, these areas of, of, this, of the long robe flowing down, picking up those areas and tucking them up into the girdle. And most frequently, finding that this Greek word would be used 
more often than not to describe a runner in a race. Not just any kind of journey, but a running race. To be able to run free and without hindrance. To be run free without hindrance. See, you just think about runners today. You know, you think about the cross-country runners, those that are running track and field, those that are pre preparing for the Summer Olympics. Is If you've watched any kind of um, preliminary running race this year, or even in the past, or you've watched any kind of competitive running, either at the amateur level, the high school level, even the middle school, elementary, that you think about the, 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 the attire that those are running in. See, they, there's most commonly, there's those shorts that are above the, the knee or mid-thigh that there's a reason why runners wear that kind of short, right? I, and and as, because they don't want to be hindered and they want to have the best time. They want to win the race, ultimately. That's the goal of any kind of competitive runner is that they want to win the race. They don't sit out to run to say, you know, I just want to do good. I just want to be in the top ten, even though being in the top ten is so great, but there's that mentality that, you know, I'm going out to, and I'm going to do my best to try to win this race. You know, and, and I was even thinking about high school basketball and how the players, I remember in high school, as a senior in high school in, in 2007, and we went, it was during the basketball season, and we found an old um, uh, bin of, of old, old basketball jerseys and shorts from the 80s when my dad played. And in one practice, we, it was kind of before playoffs, and, and we thought it would be funny to come out to practice in these old shorts, jerseys, and, and uh, uh, warm-up jackets. And I remember grabbing that pair of shorts, and I said, do they make them any bigger? And they were those short, short. Like, if you remember the 80s and even part of the 90s and the, in the 70s, that they had these short shorts. And we came out, and we practiced all practice like that. It was, it was one of those memories, you know, that stick with you the rest of your life. We just, a bunch of us just thought it'd be fun, and we knew that. Our season wasn't going to last much longer, so, but those short shorts, and, and when we were playing, the long Jordan, Michael Jordan brand shorts were popular, so we had to play in these shorts that were below our knee, and I remember sometimes as, as I wanted to run or jump that my knee would get caught on the end of the shorts, and so it was made it difficult, and I remember pulling up my shorts a little bit just to try to bring it above the knee, just like it was mentioned here, and you, and you get, <laughs> and, and I see now that the short shorts are back in now. You look at the um, prep basketball now, you look at even college and, and professional, they're going to that, that, those shorter shorts again. There's a reason. It's because the mobility, they want to they get the best out of their play, and we know that old trends make their way back. It's like a, a big circle. So I'm a little jealous and all that mobility, but no one would want me to see me in short shorts today anyway. So we'll just move on. But there's a point, you know, to this. You know, the, the Orientals that would be running, they would make sure that they would gather up all the, the, the dangling ends of their garments and tuck them up under their belts before there would be no distractions or hindrances in the natural. See, that would all change if the runner wasn't diligent in keeping their garments tucked up and out of the way. See, entanglement in would happen and down into their feet and their legs. Even if they were running a great race with great pace up to that point, it doesn't matter if you, those loose garments happen, that there's not a diligence in keeping um, those um, loose ends up out of the way. They would only hinder the incoming steps and even possibly lose the race and not do as well as they might want it. See, Peter isn't just, is not talking about a long row made out of actual material in this verse, but he's referring to the loins of our minds, the loose ends that exist in our minds and our emotions. See, Peter is saying here that we need to correct those areas, those loose areas, which 
include wrong thinking, those areas that are dangling and entangling our minds, those things that are just those thoughts, those, those things that just, just, just linger in our minds that they have no business being there. A lot of times things pop in our mind and we're not at fault for those things pop in our mind because we know the enemy will put thoughts, the devil will put thoughts in our minds, but, but we're responsible whether we kick those thoughts out or we let them linger in our minds. And again, those loose ends in our minds. By not girding up the loins of our minds, we are permitting things to exist that will hinder our steps going forward. So there's a hindering that w- that we have a responsibility that if we're not girding up the loins of our minds, we are permitting, permitting things to exist that will hinder our steps going forward. And these this hindrance will result in uh, a, they will slow us down, trip us up, get us distracted, confused, blinded, turned around, off track, and potentially, if we're not girding up those areas of our minds and and more and more is added and we're just our minds are just going wilder, emotions and, and just everything, there's a potential that we won't finish the race. And there's even a potential, if they're not taken care of, that we will lose. See, but God, but God, we must seek God in dealing with those loose ends in our minds. See, our thinking must be submitted first to the Word of God. They must be submitted to the Word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that we would, that we would take authority over our thoughts with the Word of God. Are we perfect with that? No. But does that, does that excuse us? No. We must, when, we, when we, we have fallen in those entanglements in our minds, that we say, God, forgive me. Help me. Holy Spirit, would you guide me in these areas? I, wanna, I, want, I want to be guided. I want my mind to be girded up. I don't want to have these loose thoughts, these, these emotions out of, out of whack. I don't want to get off track. I don't want these things to exist. I don't want to permit them no more that we need to tighten up those areas because if we do not tighten up those areas, those are the very areas that the devil would try to grab hold of and use against us. See, he's always, he's, he's, he's grabbing at anything he can. Those called footholds. Those loose ends in our minds are called footholds. And if there's, if there's no footholds for him to grab, then he's not going to take grab of it. He's not going to take grab of our mind. But as soon as we allow those loose ends, those things that are dangling in our minds, he can take a hold of those and, and do what he would like to do or try to do what he would like to do. So the question tonight is, are there any loose ends that you need to deal with in your life right now? And I think all of us can say yes, because none of us have it all together in our minds. But are we willing to take hold? and to gird up those loose areas. See, we can't afford to ignore or dismiss what the Holy Spirit is trying to help us in dealing with these areas of our mind. I believe that if we have any kind of relationship with Jesus and we have a desire to follow him, that he is bringing these these areas to mind that, hey, Joe, hey, we need to take care of this. We need to button this up because we can't afford to ignore or dismiss these areas. See, girding up the loins of our minds opens up a greater potential in our lives as, as we run the race with God's purposes in mind. There's this, it, just, it just opens up a greater potential that we can't even fathom or even think of. But to get there, we have to, we have to deal with the mind. We have to allow God to deal with the mind. We have to gird up the loins of our minds. See, we're running a race into some new territory that we need our minds right with God. We're heading in a, we're heading in a, <laughs> in a day and age. We're heading into the, the last of the last days. We're heading in the, in the days that, you know, Jesus talked about. We read in the Bible the perilous times, and, and we're running into a, 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 some new territory that we need our minds right with God. That the race won't be easy, but we are destined to win if we run it according to God's word and will. We're destined to win. We're destined to overcome. But we have to, we have to 
gird up the loins of our minds. They come in, in accordance to God's will and to, and to God's and his word. We've got to come in alignment. It's called, we need a divine alignment with the help of the Holy Spirit. We can't do this on our own. If we try to gird up the loins of our minds on our own, we're going we're, we're gonna to fail terribly. We're not very good. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Father. We need the, we need the guidance of Jesus Christ and his words and, and the word of God to bring up that girding in our mind so that we're able to run into this new territory, to, head, to run ahead and win, knowing that whatever tries to come into our minds, whatever kind of fear tactics, whatever we see, whatever, whatever happened in around us, that we can, we can have a sound mind going forward with God's help. I just want to encourage you with that tonight. If you have any areas in your mind that you, you are even thinking of right now, saying, God, I need help, just spend time with the Holy Spirit, spend time with the Father, spend time with Jesus Christ, and say, I need you to help me to gird up these loose ends in my mind because I want to have a sound mind. I want to head forward without depressing or anxious thoughts. I, I want to go forward um, not just thinking about my past or things I, that I've done, but God, I, I want to head forward with a clear mind saying, God, I'm a new person that I'm, I'm created new in you, and I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I don't want to have past thinking. I don't want to have past regrets, but I want to gird up these areas. Lord God, I, I'm tired of the enemy having any kind of foothold in my mind. I need the help of the Holy Spirit right now. I need to kick him out. I, mean, I need to send the devil and his demons an eviction notice saying, no more. You have nothing to grab onto because the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the living God, I am girding up my mind so that I am heading forward into the destined things of God that he has called me to. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we're hearing, no matter what we're feeling, we know that we are destined to overcome with the help of our almighty God. God bless you this evening. Have a great rest of your week.